the Board of Commissioners to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's meeting, the invocation is given by Commissioner Sarah Lacido. Commissioner. Thank you. Dear God, we thank you for all the blessings and gifts you have given us. It is a good time to recognize how different we are, our talents, our dreams, our backgrounds, and our occupations. No one is exactly like anyone else. Even our thumbprint and our voice track tell us how unique we are. Yet we thank you that we can take these differences and utilize them for the good of our county. In our differences, we can think the same thoughts and move forward together to a common goal. We thank you for our individuality and also for our common bond that works towards the betterment of Macomb County. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Lucido. Item five is approval of the minutes from dated uh, January 12th of uh, 2023. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So approved, Perna. Support Van Sickle. Discussion on the minutes? None, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item six is public participation. This is the first opportunity to have public participation on any subject on the agenda. Following uh, at the end of the meeting, you have an opportunity to speak on any item you wish uh, at the end of the meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on public participation on any item on the agenda? You have three minutes to speak if you wish. Is there any, uh, anybody else that, um, Anyone else under public participation like to be heard? Anybody else under public participation? Thank you. I need item number five to approval to do a, adopt the agenda. We need a motion to adopt the agenda. So motion to adopt the agenda. Court Sabatini. All those in favor, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item 7 is proclamations. We have a proclamation acknowledging St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Macomb Township for receiving historical marker. Commissioner Sabatini. I'll make that motion, Chair. Support Nard. Second. We'll vote on both these proclamations after we get done with the presentations. I don't want to speak uh, with my back towards the crowd because we obviously have a, a large gathering here for St. Peter's Church, but um, I was uh, made aware of this, uh, this quite honestly, uh, a huge achievement for a, a Michigan historical marker that was given to St. Peter's um, Church. And we have a proclamation here for the church that can be hung up wherever you'd like. Um, but uh, I'll present this to the entire congregation here. Um, and then as soon as I read what the proclamation says, then we'll bring you all up and we'll have a big group. So, a proclamation acknowledging St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Macomb Township for receiving a historical marker for the Michigan Historical Center. Whereas on November 30th, 2022, St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Macomb Township, Michigan, held a dedication ceremony to celebrate receiving a Michigan historical marker. The celebration of this historical occasion was shared with pastors of the church, longtime church members, and descendants of the founding pastor. Uh, whereas in 1880, hundreds of German immigrants looking for a better life settled in Macomb Township, 1,300 of the more than 2,000 people 
in Macomb Township at that time were foreign born or second generation Germans. They were part of a 50 year migration that brought more than 2 million Germans to the United States seeking of a better life for themselves. That being said, Wayne, why don't you come up? Could? I've got the oldest one. <laughs> and why don't you say a few words, just because you were the one that made me aware of this. Well, sure. And I wanted to recognize you personally as well. But this lady also, here, um, yeah, Wilma Wangelin. Right. Uh, the oldest lady here, I believe, right? Next, Milt, come here too. Yep. These two are the real seniors yes. here. Milt. And uh, if I may, we're uh, blessed with the folks that helped put this together and those that uh, put the church together that many years ago and God's grace for uh, giving us all these years to be together. But we're honored to be here. And uh, you heard from the proclamation and if you've read the paper, read the papers, we've been there too. But we're honored to be here. We thank you for honoring us and we thank the Lord that we're able to do this all. Right. Ninety four too. Milt Miller. <laughs> I was born on Hall Road when there was still mud. <laughs> uh, still mud. On a, the farm was on both sides of Tilch on the north side. Look at it now. Yeah, saw lots of things. Thank you. And Joe, one more. Dawn was very instrumental in making this all happen. Yeah. Oh. Dawn Miller. Yes. I'd like to thank everybody who participated project and many people at St. Peter helping down to, to get uh, down to the county to be able to get this done. It's been a long road, but thank you very much for honoring us. Yep. Well, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, we want to publicly honor you and commemorate you with this momentous occasion um, of the historical marker. And the historical marker has been installed yes. in front of the church. Yes. So if anyone like, would like to see the historical marker, Everyone else that's here in the audience today, you're more than welcome to do that. There are not very many of these, so it's it's very, very uh, momentous that they were honored this historical marker. So congratulations. Thank you. And Thank why you. don't we bring everybody up for a group picture, if we could. Kyle, uh, where would you like us? This way? Henry. They stay in their seats. Where would you okay, like us? We could do it here. Back on. Yeah. So we can have everybody stand right here. <coughs> everybody stand here. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Permission granted. <laughs> <laughs> Always blaming her, Wayne. Don't move. Don't move. Oh, I'm going to send time. this one to Wayne. <laughs> one, two, and three. Thank you. Next, I'm going to present a proclamation to the Armada Middle School. <laughs> Another large gathering we have today. We're very glad to have you on a snow day. How about that? Imagine how difficult it had been to herd all these uh, kids to here on a snow day. It wasn't easy. I want to present an official <laughs> proclamation on the Board of Commissioners uh, congratulating the Armada Middle School PTC team on winning the 2002 
2022 state championship title. Congratulations. Whereas the Macomb County Board of Commissioners congratulates the Armada Middle School's first Tech Challenge team for winning the state championship for the first time in the school's history. Whereas the Armada Middle School PTC team, known as the Armada Pie Gears, is comprised of 15 middle school students who train on robotics, engineering, and design process under five adult mentors and multiple student mentors. The team is led by the coach and Armada Middle School seventh grade science teacher, Justin Bigelow, who's coached the Armada Middle School PTC team every year since 2018. And whereas the dedicated members of the Armada Middle School PTC team started devoting their time months in advance to perfect their skills during practices and preparation for the two-day competition against 71 other middle school teams at the Macomb Community College in Warren. Armada Middle School PTC team members competed in qualification matches that led them to the playoffs. The team went on to sweep the division and the interdivision finals to become state champs. And whereas in addition to earning the first state com competition for the school and robotics program, the Armada Middle School PTC team had conducted 18 outreach programs, reaching 2,000 people of all ages from pre-K to adults. As a result of these outreach efforts, two additional PTC Lego League teams at Cross Elementary School were started. The Armada Middle School team continues to advocate for robotics programs working through U.S. Senator Gary Peters and his representatives. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of Commissioners speaking for and on behalf of all the county citizens offers as follows. But by these presents, the Macomb County Board of Commissioners hereby publicly honors and congratulates all members of the Armada Middle School PTC team on a significant accomplishment for this spectacular season. Be it further resolved that a suitable copy of this presentation proclamation be presented to the Armada Middle School PTC team in testimony of the high esteem in which they are held by the Macomb County Board of Commissioners. So congratulations. Thank you very much. What you're doing to train the next generation of engineers and leaders in our county is, is remarkable. Macomb County is the center of engineering for the country. Training the next generation of engineers that are going to go out and help this county continue to grow and prosper here and across the world. And here the new kids are learning things that just maybe a, 10 years ago, wasn't even taught in school, in the high schools, in, in colleges. And you're getting it right now at a very young age. So I, you're going to be really powerful when you get to be a senior and get in where you can go out and hit the workforce. And I want to thank you on behalf of everybody in the county for the work you're doing to contribute to making our county a better place. So I appreciate it. I, really I, really it. Um, obviously, I can't do this alone. I got five adult mentors. I've got former team members that have come back and helped the team. Um, these guys put in a lot of work. Uh, I push them very, very hard, um, but they always rise to the challenge, and I'm super proud of them, uh, more than a coach can possibly be. Um, yeah, we've had a lot of success this season. We've been around for five years now, but um, the success has built over time, and our biggest goal as a team is to spread more of this through Macomb County. Um, we are very low in terms of robotics teams at our level in the Macomb County area versus Oakland and St. Clair counties um, in comparison. So our biggest goal is to continue to spread the word of FIRST, continue to spread the word of robotics, and promote STEM throughout our, our, our county. So Outstanding. What are the age ranges of the, the kids that are in uh, your These guys are all from 6th through 8th grade. So we've got a pretty good spread out. Um, we have some sixth graders, seventh graders, and some eighth graders. You also brought uh, your uh, uh, design that you've been working on. Uh, why yeah. don't you tell us a little bit about that? So um, this is the robot that the kids were able to um, on us the state championship. So if we want to have um, a couple. I could do it, but they're the ones that built it. I was going to bring it up front in front of the board so the board can also see it so they can. So, Rebecca, you want to come on up? Ashley, you want to come on up? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ashley, yeah, Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. Bring them all up. We like them. We like kids. Come on up. 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 Come on up.
Avengers. Close. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they could stand back. Oh, see. Here they come up with a challenge. Kids have to meet the challenge every season. Nothing's the same from one season to the next. So you have to start from scratch every season. What's the age range again to these yeah. <laughs> inventors? to them first. I don't really need
thank you again. Yes, so, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Have a good weekend, folks. You sure will. Have a blessed weekend, too. Enjoy thank it. You. Go home. It's a snow day. What do you get? <laughs> <laughs> Young ladies there. These presentations would make my job enjoyable to see the things that people are doing in the community. And we do a lot of budget numbers, pretty dry, but to bring somebody interesting in here from our communities, from our churches, and, uh, and uh, all the historical things going on. Just cleans out this book. That's right. Well, I guess we got to check this and turn it in, right? Some people are still checking and moving. I thought the rule was closed today. Yes. That's a crowd. Well, yeah. Well, all the kids connect are connected on an app to their to the high school robotics team, so they put the word out to all the kids through their app, awesome. and they all got in here. Okay, I need a motion to. Well, we have a motion to adopt item seven A and B, the proclamations. That um, can I please vote on that, please. All right. I just hear. That pass. Uh, Commissioner Perna, did your vote pop up? Commissioner Perna, are you abstaining from this vote? <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sarah, would you help him, please? <laughs> Motion passes 10 to 0. Very good. Thank you. She did, there she is. Yeah, the rule. Okay. The rule. Item 8, appointments. We have friend of the court, uh, citizen advisory committee. To the new commissioners, we're approving these nominations. That'll be final approvals at the full board. Um, friend of the court, citizens advisory committee, the executive appointment with a one-year vacancy, one-year term to expire December 31st, 2023. Perry J. Simons and uh, Tom Boulom from friend of the court. Um, I need a motion to concur and send us to full board. So moved by me. Support being sickle. Tom, would you like to speak? Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Thomas Blum. I'm the director of the Macomb County Friend of the Court. And just to give you a brief overview, the, the Friend of the Court Citizens Advisory Committee is made up of nine individuals from Macomb County from a, a variety of different backgrounds and perspectives. Uh, these individuals are nominated by the executive board. Uh, it's an advisory board only. Uh, they they are, don't have any supervision powers over the Friend of the Court. It has been in place since 2015, and it's not a mandatory committee, but it is one that we choose to, to have in Macomb County. Uh, I very much appreciate the perspectives of these nine individuals. They come from all sorts of different backgrounds, attorneys, uh, DHHS individuals, people from the public, uh, two individuals from the general public, a custodial party, a non-custodial party. Uh, it's just been invaluable to me, and I appreciate how productive uh, and helpful our meetings have been because of them. So I fully support the two individuals that you have before you today. Thank you, Commissioner. Good. Thank you. Um, these appointments will be made today. It's, this is a full board meeting, so we'll be making these appointments today. So, any discussion on this? Anyone? Any questions for uh, Mr. Bohm? Seeing that, now please vote. Sure. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 8B, Friend of a Court, Citizens Advisory Committee, Executive Appointment for Don Don Pro, Pro Pepic. The motion is moved so by Commissioner now. Nard. Support by Commissioner Hall. Any discussion on, on this item? Don, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item C, uh, Area and Aging 1B, Chair Appointment, Board Concurrence, one Commissioner Vacancy on the Area Aging 1B Board. Uh, Commissioner Don Van Sickle has been nominated by myself. Uh, need a motion to concur? So moved Kerr, by Nara. By in order, supported by Perna. Discussion?
Motion passes 10 to 1. Commissioner Vansicle abstaining. Thank you. Item D, Health Department Hearing Board, two vacancies, um, health of two-year appointment. Commissioner's designee, uh, Sarah Lacido on the, as chair of the Health Services Committee and Vice Chair Barbara Zinner on, as vice chair of that same committee. Make motions to Motion appoint by Hall. Votes. Supported Support. by Romano. Discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 10 to 0 to 1. Commissioner Lucido abstaining. Thank you. Item Intermediate Trust Board. Um, one vacancy, a two year term to expire on January 31st, 2024. Uh, Harold Hall. So moved board. by Nard. Support by Lucido. Discussion on this item? On seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 10 to 0 to 1. Commissioner Hall abstaining. Okay. Item F, Retiree Health Care Board, one, of, one board appointment. Um, Two-year term, I just expired on January, December 31st, 2024. Nomination of Harold Hall and a two-year term to expire on January 31st, 2024. Um, Commissioner Joe Sabatini of the Finance Committee. Motion. Need a motion. Support by NARD. Discussion? Please vote. Motion passes nine to zero to two. Commissioners Haw and Sabatini abstaining. Item G, Retirement Commission Chair appointment, two year term to expire on December 31st, 2024. Nomination of Harold Haw. Support by NARD. Discussion? Please vote. Or can we appoint him to a few more committees? It seems like Harold likes going to these committees. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Joe. <laughs> I just wanted to ask. Motion passes 10 to 0 to 1. Commissioner Haw abstaining. Thank you. Thank you for those who are serving, commissioners who are serving on the various committees. Look forward to uh, working with you going forward in the year. Item 9 is department recommendations. Item 9A, amended statement of work, CBI telecommunications <coughs> consultants, global telecom expense management solutions, three year uh, total $106,200. Uh, we have uh, Jaco here to give us the information. Jaco, welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Jacob Van Blurk. Uh, nice to meet the new Commissioners. Um, the first item that I bring before you today is this, uh, our CBI telecom contract that we started uh, three years ago. Uh, that contract is now uh, expiring, and we want to renew the contract uh, once again, uh, we're buying the contract off of Oakland County's G2G pricing, which means that, you know, it went out through RFP and everything when Oakland County did it. Uh, we're very happy with the company. They've, you know, implementing it was, was quite a journey, but once we had it working, um, you know, I think the company saved, saved, saved us almost uh, $100,000 in the first year that we uh, started working with them on our telecom spending. So um, that's the contract and we would like to renew it for another three years, same cost, same price as it was before. Thank you. Uh, any speakers, any questions on this? Any speakers? Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item 9B, agreements, information technology and maintenance agreements for the first quarter 2023. Total cost $338,759. AT&T E911 dispatch maintenance. Dell, Dell cloud storage. 
interpersonal frequency, maintenance and website hosting, and trace three, Kemp Load Balancer. Um, Peg, would you speak to these? I need a motion on these first. The Port Nard. Uh, the maintenance items that we bring pretty much every month come to the board. We will have a few. Uh, they go on throughout the year. Uh, obviously, in the beginning of the year, there's a lot of them, and we brought most of that to you towards the end of last year. Uh, the AT&T one is uh, uh, money that we pay to AT&T for uh, various uses of our dispatch center also provide us connectivity to um, Warren's Dispatch Center, which is our backup center, and they actually refund us about 20,000 of that amount every year. Uh, the rest of the money the town pays. Dollar Jure is just our um, disaster recovery um, in the cloud where we move data that's highly critical for the county, so in case we have some big outage we can re and you cannot recover locally, we can do that. Um, Trace 3 is a load balancer that we pay every year, um, and that is just to balance traffic as it comes into our network. Uh, total amount is about $338,000. Any questions on this item? Mr. Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hi, Jaco. Question about the AT&T E911 cost. Is that something that can be funded through the new E911 tax? Where does that funding come from to pay for that? I am not sure. I will have to verify that for you, Commissioner. Uh, the, uh, what I can say is we started this uh, probably five, six years ago uh, when the new dispatch uh, center was uh, implemented and after the fact, you know, to establish all the connectivity, us and AT&T as well as um, us and Warren and so forth. Okay, because I know those so funds are specific to certain things that you can use them for. And I was just curious. But I will, I will uh, find out and I will uh, send an email. Be a little bit of money out of your account. Thanks, Jaco. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Kraft. A good catch on that. Any other questions? I don't see any on the screen. And please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item 9C, Budget Amendment, Health Department, Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, Local Health Department grant for $55,545. I have Director Cox here to address this issue. Good afternoon, Director. How are you? Good afternoon, Chair. And commissioners and Chair. Like I'll make a motion. motion. Motion by Sabatini. Second. By Commissioner Nard. <clears throat> and congratulations to the new commissioners that are here today. Uh, great to meet you for the first time. Um, I'm Andrew Cox, the Director Health Officer for the health department, and I've got today three budget amendments in front of you. So the first one is a budget amendment for uh, in the amount of 55545 that is going to directly support what we call the non-community water supply program. This is a little bit different from, so community water supplies uh, in terms of well waters are communities that uh, are served by well water, where the communities serve from that well. These are smaller, uh, typically businesses, private schools that are on non-community water so sources that we specifically oversee. The community water supplies themselves, which are type ones, are EGLE. Uh, we regulate type twos and, and oversee those programs. There's a lot of uh, oversight of that program in terms of getting water samples and water testing uh, with these uh, Bad community water supplies, which are about 88 in Macomb County, uh, where we have two staff typically uh, involved with the maintenance of this program and then also a supervisor and office assistant. We've all, always advocated for additional funding because the funding that we do get from that typically does not cover all their time. 
that they put into this program. And I think finally the state was listening and gave us additional money to support the personnel costs. So this is really to offset personnel expenses in that program. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Chair. Good. Any questions on this item? Okay. So uh, how many areas do you actually go to? And what areas do you have a area that you're detaining? It's anybody that falls in the category. So these are not residential wells. Uh, that is a type three well. These are type two wells, so it's a business of some kind. It could be a golf course or like I said, a school. And there's uh, under 100 in our county, all over the county. Most of them are located in the northern end. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Next budget amendments from the Health Department of FY 2022-23 MDHHS Comprehensive Planning, Budgeting, and Contracting Grant for Emerging Threats Agreement. Cox. Thank you, Commissioner. Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this, this amendment is actually um, a reduction in the amount of that we budgeted. This was a statewide error that uh, MDHHS had for the emerging threats, which is the COVID M's and workforce development grant dollars. Uh, so this is actually a reduction. This is not typical. This is unusual. This was a statewide error. So all health departments had, to re had reduced funding for their amounts. The reduction is <clears throat> in the amount of two, $2 million, and $189, quite a significant reduction in funding. Uh, however, we're asking just for a reduction in the amount of uh, $1,342,004 based off of supporting that with other funding for COVID M's uh, with some of the activities waning for COVID and being reduced. Uh, we feel like we could absorb this amount within the other programmatic uh, areas. Uh, we did get uh, some notice that the state believes that we will be getting additional funding to replace some of this reduction. We just don't know how much at this time, but we had to do a budget amendment. Thank you. Try to answer any questions. Thank you. Of course, I don't see any questions on the screen. Motion passes 11 to 0. Item F, cost share agreement with Clinton Township and the city of Frazier. Kelly Road reconstruction from 14 mile to 15 mile road. Need a motion to approve? So moved. Board Perna. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Cox. Have a good afternoon. Commissioners, uh, again, hello, Commissioners. Some some of you I know, some of you I don't. My name is Scott Wanagat. I'm the County Highway Engineer for the Department of Roads, filling in for Brian Santo, who is our Director off this week. Department is requesting the approval of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between Clinton Township and the Macomb County Department of Roads for the reconstruction of Kelly Road from 14 mile to 15 mile at a total cost of $5,696,000 to be covered by federal funding, Clinton Township, the City of Fraser, and the Department of Roads. Funding is available in the 2023 contract. Thank you. Is there any question on this item? Um, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. 
Item G, cost share agreement from Shelby with Shelby Township, 25 mile road pedestrian bridge construction. I need a motion to approve. So moved by Nard. Uh, department is requesting approval of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between Shelby Township and the Macomb County Department of Roads for the construction of a pedestrian bridge along 25 mile road from Apple Lane to Eastside Drive at a total cost of $360,255 to be covered by federal funds and Shelby Township. There is no cost to the Department of Roads for this project. Question on this, I don't see any questions. Please vote. Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Is this a... Um, Get up to the bridge. Will there be steps or is there a ramp or what? How, what's the approach? It ties into the existing pathway that's over there. So there, there would be sidewalk that leads up to abutment that would support the bridge and then carry. Okay, so this isn't over 25 mile road. It's over. Correct. It, it's a parallel to 25 mile. I believe just on the north side of it, there's a drain that crosses across 25. So this is to connect the pedestrian facilities on either side. So it's just a grade level bridge. Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> thank you, Commissioner. Anyone else? None, please vote. <coughs> Motion passes 11 to zero. Thank you. Item H, cost share agreement with City of Sterling Heights, Metro Parkway, Preliminary engineering work. Um, I need a motion to approve. Support Van Sickle. Yeah. The department is requesting the approval of the cost share agreement outlining this cost participation between the city of Sterling Heights and the Macomb County Department of Roads for preliminary engineering work in consideration for the reconstruction of Metro Parkway from west of Mound Road to east of Van Dyke at a total cost of $1,245,000 to be covered by federal funding uh, with the remainder to be shared between both agencies of Macomb County and Sterling Heights. Funding is available in our 2023 road plan. Questions? None, please vote. Motion passes 11 to zero. Thank you. Item J, or I, cost share agreement, City of Warren, Mound Road preliminary engineering work. So moved by NARD. Board Hall. Thank you again, Chair. The department is requesting approval for a similar item uh, of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between the city of Warren and the Macomb County Department of Roads for preliminary engineering work in consideration of the reconstruction of Mound Road from 8 Mile to I-696 at a total cost of $1,245,000 to be covered by federal funding with the remainder to be shared between MCDR and the city of Warren. Funding is available in the 2023 road construction budget. Thank you, Commissioner Nard. I, I forgot what your name was, I'm sorry. Scott. Scott, okay. Scott, uh, could you just explain a little bit more uh, about what this uh, actually covers? There's a lot of a uh, question about it, so I just wanna let the residents really understand what's going on here. Sure, so what this funding, we received additional federal funding in 2022 that needed to be obligated within that fiscal year. Um, so that money was put towards two particular projects that are in our scope that we're looking to do, which is the reconstruction of mound roads, essentially continuing the, the Innovate Mound project south of I-696 to 8 Mile, and also Metro Parkway from uh, Mound Road to Van Dyke. So what this particular study is going to incorporate is it does a lot of the preliminary engineering work that will allow us to better align for the application of a larger federal, federally funded grant opportunity in the future, similar to how the Innovate Mound was accomplished through the IFRA grant. Okay, another question I had about it, uh, it, it are they gonna consider uh, broadband or, or other types of uh, uh, bells and whistles that they have on the north part of that project? 
Yes, I believe all those items are going to be looked at very similar to under the same kind of microscope as the Innovate Mound project itself. Okay, thank you for that clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. I think Commissioner Nard just covered my question. So all the utilities near Mound will be covered with this? The, this, this study is basically, like we said, to um, it allows us to get a lot of the environmental uh, investigation done. Um, a lot of the preliminary work to to guide us in developing. If we do receive the grant money, it's 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 basically kind of getting you off the launch pad, so to speak. So a lot of that legwork is done, and you can hit the ground running a little bit faster once you get the federal grant. No, but I mean, some utilities will need to be moved, and such as that. Will this identify that? Yes, it will. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Van Sickle. <coughs> Any other questions? Seeing none. Motion passes 11 to 0. To item J, cost share agreement Macomb Township, shared use path, bike path, shared use path construction. Um, the motion to approve. Uh, proceed. Department is requesting approval of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between Macomb Township and the Macomb County Department of Roads for the construction of a shared use path on 25 mile road into the Macomb Township Center in the amount of $436,654 with Department of Road share at $97,892 with funding available in the fiscal 23 budget. You, uh, questions? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Good. Item K, cost share agreement, Shelby Township, mid block crossing installation. See the motion? I make the motion. Okay, thank you. Department is requesting approval of the cost share agreement outlining the cost participation between Shelby Township and the Macomb County Department of Roads for the installation of mid-block crossings on 21 mile, 22 mile, 24 and 25 mile roads at a total cost of $350,064 with Department of Roads contributing $34,144 and funding available in the fiscal 23 construction budget. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Van Sickle. Thank you, Chair. Uh, some of the mid-block crossings that I've seen have flashing warning lights by them. Will this have those? Um, I believe there will be uh, at least the pedestrian um, crossing uh, lights that are there. I don't know if they, I have not looked to see if there would be those. Okay. Well, anyway, there's some electrical expense there. Uh, Ongoing, who covers that? Is the county responsible for any of that, or will that be totally uh, Shelby Township? Um, I believe that uh, that is uh, typically the township. So we're only participating in the construction. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Anyone else? Other questions? So please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Item L, waiting period for reemployment for Retiree Assistant Corporation Council. Uh, Scott, thank you for your information. You. Appreciate your time. Good, uh, Mr. Schaap, Mr. Schaap, our Corporation Council. Welcome to our new commissioner. Welcome back to our long serving commissioner. Uh, my purpose for appearing before you is to obtain the requirement concerning the charter for retired employee is to include it. Frank Prescia, who's worked for the county.
elections, these are vital functions for our treasurer, vital functions for our treasurer. Frank is past his drop. He was there five years ago. That drop ended at the end of this month. February passed the drop period just for election season. After that, he'll separate completely unless we bring him back on a part-time basis. Plus per year. The executive recommends the waiver of the one-year timeout and or approval of that waiver. Waiver can be found at Charter Section 10.6. Very simple thing. Quite frankly, if Frank had gone for a year, we would not get him back. We'll be at a law firm someplace pulling down three times the money. Variety of real estate and tax action. All by itself, I can't let that happen. I'm asking for your approval. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Commissioner Hoff. Thank you, Chair. Hi, John. Happy New Year. Thank you. Two quick questions. One, each of these requests moving forward are handled on their individual merits, so we're not establishing a precedent here. Is that correct? On individual merits. Thank you. More importantly, it'd have to be approved by me or a department head, approved by the and then coming to the board, and what you do today is not a precedent as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Second question is, does this have to be approved by the retirement board at all? No, this is a strict charter issue. So there's no retirement issues here, that's no. what you're telling me? No, he would, uh, the uh, part-time status is echoed in the retirement ordinance. It's also in statute. It's also uh, one other thing. No, honestly, I'm really glad to hear that, quite frankly. We don't need that discussion. Oh, no, there, there's no discussion with the retirement board. Great. Thank you. That's We'd all have I a have short to. separation period of about a month, maybe four weeks, and that's just so we can act on it. Thank you. That's all I have, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hi, John. Hi. Real quick, has this been done before, and if so, for how many employees? Uh, there are employees who come back and we part-time position. I'm not sure if there was a waiver. I believe there were. I think the county might have it spread throughout all the, the county workforce. If I vote no, it's because I don't want Frank to leave. And I want to keep him <laughs> full-time. Can I do that? <laughs> will not do that. <laughs> Thank you, John. I, that was my first avenue. <laughs> Please, please, please. I appreciate please. your effort. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And by the and this would be cost neutral to the county. The part time position would be funded by his full time current paycheck. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Van Single. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. When did you become aware that uh, Mr. Kreischer was planning to retire? Uh, when he dropped five years ago. Uh, the DROP program is a uh, Deferred Retirement Option Plan. It allows a county employee to effectively retire, but stay on for up to five years. During that time, ordinary pension check access that until they complete the So ordinarily, when an employee drops, you can put them on five more years. Having said that, I know of at least two employees who have passed the end of the five a considerable number of years. The advantage to the county is enter the drop program, their pension is frozen at that moment. No greater pension for the next five years if they can stay. Also, their, their health care is taken care of. Great boon to the county. when Frank dropped so if it's been on your calendar for five years what have you done to replace him uh, I don't want to replace him so the answer is nothing I, okay so in a way by not doing anything to replace him you've sort of created your problem I don't think this is a problem this is an opportunity if Frank walks out at the end of February and says I don't want to work part-time and we can't make him work here with Uh, I would have to replace him. Quite frankly, I will never find someone with his skills. 
had things happening throughout the treasurer's office and the clerk's office because I'm essentially hiring a manager. Frank is probably, and I cannot extol his virtues enough, is the consummate expert in the state of Michigan. But even at this late date, it would seem prudent to put plans in place to replace him, regardless of whether it's a direct fully up as capable replacement or not, it would seem prudent to be making plans to replace the person. I've been working on Frank for two years. Working on him and replacing him are two different subjects. Oh, I understand. Working on him to keep him here so I can. Yeah, but we're all going to, we're all going to phase out. Eventually, eventually. Okay, I, I guess I would suggest that we look very seriously at a plan to get a more permanent solution than working this individual part time. Frank is, well, in my book, still relatively young. He probably get another 10 years worth of work out of him. And it's the county and those two departments that. Uh, so you think we can get 10 years worth of work out of him part time, which would be sufficient? Sure. So what's he been doing with all his full time? What's he been doing with his full time? He's well, I mean, he's been working for his full time, and now yes. you're telling me you can replace him with a half time person. No, no, no. He will continue in a half time role. Frank, in a, even a half time role, more valuable and a bigger asset than replacing him. Yeah, but right now he's working full time, correct? Correct. But you're telling me when he goes part time, he could do the same job? Much. His work ethic is beyond outstanding, and I know even though he may chart a thousand hours per year, he'll put in all the hours that are necessary to get the job. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Zinner. Chair, um, I've called Frank several times with citizen concerns, and he. You have answered this question. I'm not sure getting his same pay that he is now at no it would be half time pay i understand the value when you have someone of that kind of value if you can you know nail his feet to the floor uh it's great with great for the county and i would imagine eventually you'll have a part time person just to start training or learning how to have someone who has that kind of knowledge and graceful with what he does it would just be better Frank is the guy we all go to when we ask the most obscure questions imaginable. And he looks at the ceiling and he says, no, there's a statute. And then he gives you the citation of the statute. And he's right. Yeah, I hope you can keep him. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Romano. Thank you, Corporal. That but is, that is a, a <laughs> risk that I, that I think of, of every day. <laughs> so he is a wealth of knowledge uh, that somebody that I, I totally agree with you that somebody should be kept around. You answered the question about being cost neutral. Um, some things that attorneys, uh, that, that Frank has forgotten, attorneys haven't learned yet. I've so, always said Frank has forgotten more law than I will ever know. I'm for as long as we can. I'm with you 100%. That's Thank all I you. have, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. Commissioner Nard. Um, Commissioner Kraft and uh, Commissioner Van Sickle actually asked my question, uh, and you answered it, and then you added uh, another question I came up with. So he sounds like somebody that's a uh, wealth of knowledge and uh, is the reason that Macomb County is as great as it is, and I think that we should uh, always value that and keep that. So um, hats off to you for even, you know, bringing this to us. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Sabatini. Um, not opposed to this in any way, shape, or form. Department. I know in budget, you asked for a new attorney. Yes. This is going to be budget neutral, so you're going to have some more available funds in your budget. I Are will. You? I will. So what is your plan um, for bringing on another attorney, I would assume, um, to either be mentored by Frank or kind of how is your department going to shift with Frank still being on board, hopefully? Um, and bringing on some new. My, the 
this sounds kind of Stalin's, but my five-year plan. Bill, the newly funded FOIA slash subpoena lawyer, and bankruptcy, which is also one of Frank's areas. Cross-training will begin with our bankruptcy practice over the next two or three years. That attorney will be easily other half of Frank's half-time job. And if or when Frank ever leaves. Completely and with no contract. That, that's really an entry-level type position. So has that position been posted? Not been posted yet because we're still working on the space. Uh, one of the questions when I asked for the funding was, do you have space? I said, sort of. Um, the old Powell's office space has been empty. It's being used as a storeroom. I've already claimed it. The executive promised it to me, and we started moving in. It's really just a matter of um, facilities knocking a doorway, not for the door, but a doorway in the commons off the street. That is a four-week process. I plan on posting next week. Thank you, Commissioner Sabatini. Questions? None. Uh, please vote. Commissioner Brown? I yes, sir. I have responded. Go ahead, Commissioner Perna. Question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hall, for asking the question regarding pension. My question was that this is a one time exception for our attorney. Question was, you're bringing him back. County commissioner that's retired come back. Is he eligible for that? <laughs> Wait a minute. There's actually there's actually a different rule applicable to elected officials coming back. They don't have the time out if they're elected. I guess it did. That's a good question for another opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions? None, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Item 10A, Standing Committees for 2023-24. I need a motion to approve. Certified. I'll support. Without objection. Discussion, any of these? Um, please vote. Chair, if I may, uh, with yes. item D, I know that was updated. What was actually updated on the application? We just, we, we, go ahead, Commissioner, Chairman, Vice Have, Chair Hall. Having filled one of those out, Joe, quite a bit. Relatives employed, you needed notarized uh, background, whether or not you've been convicted of felony. I can answer that one for you. Um, th it's those, I, I thought it to be quite detailed as an update, um, but definitely needed. Um, Crystal, do you have any other comments to that? You're the one that updated that form for us. <laughs> Thanks, Crystal. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, some of the items had to be updated to come into compliance with the updated ethics ordinance that was updated a couple years ago. And um, we did remove the notary. That is not required. And that form has been approved by council. It hasn't been approved it by has. council? It has. All right. Motion passed 11 to 0. Thank you. Item 11 is correspondence of most received and file 11A and 11B. So move, Van Sickle. Board Perna. Any discussion in any of those uh, correspondence? Any 
Any, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 12 is public participation. This is the second opportunity for anyone from the public to wish to be speaking any item you wish. You have three minutes to, to address the board. Anyone from the public wish to be heard? Anyone from the public wish to be heard? One third time. Anyone from the public? Seeing no one, we'll close public participation. Uh, commissioner comments. Uh, Wish to say anything to for the good of the order? I want to make some comments. Of, of, of Crystal's got some updated housekeeping measures for us. Um, one of the things, speaking that Corporation Council mentioned room, we're asking FNO to come in and review because we're probably going to think about replacing that wall to give us more space for meetings for members of the public to attend. In the last couple of years, we've come had some space issues. We think we'd rather maybe sit back and have overflow rooms. I think this will give us some more space. I talked with uh, uh, Galvin this afternoon, early this morning, and um, Reed, and uh, we're going to have him come in and take a look at that and open up that room, open up this room a little bit more to give us more space for the public. Crystal, could you uh, address the rest of the issues that were housekeeping matters that the board would be interested in? Sure. So our AV equipment has been fully installed. They still are working on the programming, so they're going to work on that with us the next couple weeks. Um, as you all know, Student Government Day was postponed. Now that you've adopted your 2023 schedule, we will get a new date um, scheduled as soon as we can and get that out to you and an updated invite to the students. Um, next Thursday at Government Oversight, Laura will be um, presenting some of our programs. She'll be giving you the 2022 casual day um, update how we ended the year in 2022 with that and talking about volunteer recognition we've changed the program a little bit this year and that um, she'll also be here to explain that to the new commissioners um, now that you've adapted your meeting schedule we will be sending out all those calendar events so your email will be flooded with those but <laughs> that will make sure that they go on all of your calendars um, and then Chair Brown spoke to the wall removal. We did determine that that room in this room is more needed than the two different conference rooms. We barely need both of those rooms at once, so that'll be nice to open that up. Thank you. Commissioner Romano. Yes, I actually have plans to make you all a notebook as opposed to the binders you used to receive so they're a little easier to carry around. I was waiting till you had your meeting calendar so that could be included. Um, the county print shop's gonna be closed for a while so we might find somewhere outside the county to print those but I will work on getting those put together. We usually put the board rules in there, um, the charter, the documents you're gonna find yourself um, accessing most frequently. Also we have in the print shop the year-end report that you received the last full board morning of the year for those commissioners that requested copies of those to put in their district uh, those are in, in process now and those are being received uh, rather than later else see no speaker yes Mr. Hoff thank you uh, two quick things I, I know we're perfecting our system here but the echo coming out of that microphone is terrible I, I know I can't be the only one that's hearing that so we have to have them fix that. Uh, that's just very distracting. And secondly, I would like to encourage all my colleagues, even the new ones, if you haven't taken the electronic ethics ordinance course, please do that. It's very beneficial, it's very informative, and you actually get a notification from HR that you have completed it. So that's just a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. That's good advice, and uh, I took it as well, and I passed. <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't have to sure take a test at the end. They didn't say what your percentage was, a pass or fail grade, so. Um, 
Anybody else? Okay, we're going to close Commissioner comments. We're going to go into closed session. We need a motion. motion to go into closed session to discuss USDC case number 20-CV-12995. Support. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Please vote. Thank you very much. Anyone that's not part of the ex executive session, uh, please clear the room. Nice to have you visitors come in. Motion passes 11 to 0. Item 15A, I need a motion to approve the settlement agreement USDA CC. USDC case number 220 CV 12995. The motion has been made by Romano to concur. Is there support? Support. Turner. Oh. Oh, whoever. Yeah, I'd support it before. Discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Uh, item 16 is a motion to adjourn. May I have a motion? To adjourn. Support adjourn. Very good. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Please vote. After you vote.